Welcome back guys. Assalamu alaikum. This is Lara Rook again with you on my same channel. Happy to help. Today we are going to discuss about the Government of Ireland International Education Scholarship 2023. Um, I would begin about speaking about this scholarship with my experience, my knowledge, my understanding and why it was so important to talk about this scholarship that I'm returning back to my videos. Uh, so first thing first. Them, um, unfortunately, due to current uh, situations globally, and like uh, it, it's really important that everybody of us move on in our careers. And due to unfortunate situations in some of our countries, it's I know how difficult it is to look for opportunities, and it has become indeed really competitive to like in terms of some of the well-known scholarships. So. This scholarship is, in that context, really, really a significant opportunity for for like more than a million reasons. Uh, first of all, it is uh, not a very common scholarship, as per my knowledge. The second reason is that uh, it is a suitable, well-funded. I mean, it's it's not like it's not an awesome funding, but it's like you can survive hand to mouth. And the third reason is that it's it's pretty much easier to get this scholarship as compared to other more prestigious scholarships. And this is, we are actually talking about masters in eight months. And well, the key here is that although this scholarship is for eight months masters, uh, like we call, we, it is uh, genuinely one year masters, but considering only the academic terms, which is eight months, so you get to come here and like, like, survive with difficulty for eight months and like study and work hard uh, but even after your graduation you get a 24 months stay back visa which in other words is also called as a graduation visa which is um, more commonly known from UK that if you graduate in UK you get a graduate visa and that's the visa time you are allowed to work uh, part-time or do whatever in the country and look for jobs so Government of Ireland gives you 24 months stay back visa and that time you're allowed to look for jobs, you are allowed to work part time or full time and you can like survive, do look for more opportunities like PhD ma and other masters or whatever you want to do in the country. So the key is uh, you don't get funded beyond uh, the graduation period, but it is possible to make a living uh, even after that. Uh, I mean, once you have lived here for a year, so you know the situations around the country, you know how to make living, how to how to save your budget and all. So um, we'll go to the PDF document uh, for this scholarship. But before that, uh, just a key of a couple of highlights and do's and don'ts like uh, alerts or merits on the merits of this scholarship. So this scholarship pays you 10,000 euros per year, which is not a lot, honestly. I mean, 10,000 euros is not a very good amount given given the current inflation and everything. Uh, so we'll come to that, which, which universities and which cities are possible to survive with this scholarship. And um, well, Dublin and Galway are absolutely a big no-no for, for this 10,000 amount. But even if you go for Dublin and Galway and other big cities in Ireland, um, every student is allowed to work 20 hours a week and if you work all a month, 20 hours per week, um, you can essentially earn enough to make your living or even make savings to live after your graduation here. Uh, the second thing is the full fee is waived. Uh, so, the, so, the, so the tuition fee is waived in whichever institute you get the admission. But the but the little glitch here is that you have to still pay for the admission fee, which is which rounds from twenty euro to uh, and can, it can go up to fifty euro. So and there is no way that you can get a waiver for that. I mean, well, uh, considering very difficult situations, so I'm like mentioning that you were under like flood affected people or areas as in Pakistan. Maybe you can request the university to waive the fee, but I'm not confident that they would 
accept your request because I have personally tried it for my friends and family, uh, but that didn't work out. So I'm afraid that this is not going to work. Uh, but I would call it it is it would be still an investment in your in your career and in your future. And I know 50 euro is still a lot of amount, and you have to apply to at least a couple of universities so that you have options to put into the scholarship application form so here uh university admission and the scholarship uh, application are two different things and we'll come to that but um, another highlight of it is that uh, it starts in september 2023 and ends in may 2024 and you can get to you can still get a visa to live here 24 months beyond your graduation so say you can live here by may 2026 so this is the pdf document and i'll be sharing both of the links in my video here so i'll begin with the list of universities here because it's it's really important um, to first of all understand the situation here so so the first step is to get the admission in at least three of these universities and then once you have unconditional offers from these universities then you apply for the application which you can still go back on this application portal and you can somewhere uh, yep here here you can apply for it you make your uh, account and so on you can continue to make your application for that so so these are 25 universities in total uh, which are uh, which are listed for the scholarship and you have to apply for more than one of course so if i have to begin with um, in a neutral word i would begin with looking for my my course for example i want to do a master's in energy systems engineering i would start from american college dublin and look for my course energy systems engineering and so on and and i would shortlist the number of universities where i find my course and i will apply for that but this is not a new not a neutral word and so because it's it's really really difficult to make a living in dublin with ten thousand euros a year so i would first of all exclude dublin from my list because i know with ten thousands i cannot make a living in dublin um then i would exclude all the galway schools then i would exclude also cork and maybe limerick <coughs> excuse me so we are down to like only a couple of universities which have further campuses in smaller towns or villages where it is possible to make a living in 10,000 but if you don't if you even do not find your course in those universities which is of course going to be a case that not everybody is going to find a university in let's say ATU Atlantic Technological University who, who have campuses in far-flung areas of Ireland so it's okay either way you you just you have to shortlist the, your universities with respect to your course and with respect to the town or area the university is situated in so on that note um i have personally felt that people from south asia tend to stick to their um, their particular field for example if i am i have a bachelor's in energy systems engineering i will stick to that and i would find that and like i won't even go to somewhere which doesn't have systems in it or so i wouldn't even like like to seek admission in energy engineering because i would just think oh hey what if i go back to pakistan i won't get a job in um in abc recognized uh, institute or whatever so if you if you look for the courses with that mindset i'm afraid you won't be able to shortlist any of thing any of these universities so first of all you have to come out of that mindset and you have to think beyond that you have to open up your area of expertise and you have like i mean if you come here for masters or phd you, you will still have to learn new skills and uh, i guess that's what that's why we are looking for the scholarship to learn more skills so and like um, honestly speaking if you're coming here and looking for this scholarship and if you're seeing this video i am like pretty much sure you're not planning to go back to pakistan and like work in the same institutes that you graduated from um yeah there can be difficulty with respect to finding jobs back home but if you're coming here and if you look 
your future here i mean there there's absolutely no harm in broadening your f- area of expertise in fact it is really appreciated here if you had a bachelor's in electrical and then a master's in something else and then you're doing a phd in something else that that translates here that you have all those uh, skill set and you are a better better engineer than than the other person who has just continued to work in the same field so that's the key first step is to shortlist the universities apply in those universities and pay the tu- uh, pay the application fee which is going to be a, like a burden on your pocket but um i guess it would pay and it's it's just 50 euro and i have uh well it's up to you but it is an honest investment so we'll just go through the document that's just the background and like objectives of why do or they want to give this scholarship to you and like what is their eligibility criteria uh, so the d- detail of a scholarship is they will pay you 10,000 for one year and this is the one year ta- taught master's uh, degree program or one year research programs so example one year of a two year research master's or a three year P- uh, PhD program. So uh, so the master's here is um, very commonly one year but even if you are part of already registered master's or already registered PhD program, you can come here for one year and you would still get the 10,000 for one year and you can live here. So um, the social system will transfer to your HEI Institute and they would give you the stipend per month and you have the full fee waiver and they're going to give about the 60 scholarships which include these masters and PhD and everyone. And remember that this is not only for a particular country this is a global scholarship and they they select people from all around the world uh, and they must be outside of EU UK or Switzerland and they must be um, approved HEC HEA sorry will seek to ensure that overall there is a gender balance so hey ladies <laughs> you have a like a margin here uh, due to very large number of applicants it's not possible to give feedback but Mm, I would say you will hear back uh, if you are uh, if you're not selected for this application welcome and so on so you should have, oh yep so IELTS like uh, IELTS or like any English exam is not or maybe or maybe not required by this scholarship but for admission in Irish institutes I would say you need at least one English proficiency exam which means uh, IELTS or TOEFL but the good news here is that Duolingo is absolutely acceptable and you can come here with uh, with that so um, okay you you need it's completely your responsibility to apply for the program um, you can make a mention in your application that you're applying for this particular scholarship and they can consider you for like I mean they, they can give you extra points for this because they would know that there is a guarantee of funding you're not going to pay from your own pocket and you can get this scholarship uh, but applying for those universities is your own responsibility oh my god this is amazing they have absolutely listed what these uh, what the how do they evaluate your application so 40 marks on your skills achievements or what work experiences so imagine if you have a good gpa if you have little bit of work experience here it goes your 40 marks and then uh, f- 15 marks in the benefit of becoming of a GOI is the score so it's, it's something something very common why 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 you why, why they should give the scholarship to you and not to other candidates what are your like merits and all how they will extend themselves beyond project studies okay so this is uh, not a particular exchange program but uh, in uh, scholarships like these it is uh, always um, expected that you go beyond your uh, s- academics and you actively participate in all the extracurricular and and cultural activities and trust me Ireland is a very culturally rich country so they would and they appreciate other cultures and the people are really nice here so they expect you to be nice they expect you to participate and they expect expect you to exchange your culture with them and like learn their language learn 
about their music and their food so and you have to represent this all in your personal statement which you submit for the uh, application for scholarship and the, and the extent to which they have a long-term interest in Ireland oh yep so there's no harm in mentioning here that even after your graduation you want to come to Ireland because say you belong to a biomedical field and you see that Ireland is the hub for it and like you see your future here and then finally 15 marks on two references um, so <laughs> Uh, references I know how does it work in in my country Pakistan but honestly speaking to seek these 15 marks you have to make your like tailor-made like a pretty specific kind of reference letter because otherwise if it's a very generic reference letter I'm afraid that you're going to lose these 15 marks so um, this is their way of assessment how do how do they assess um, I'll share the link of this PDF document you could just go on yourself so it was announced in December the deadline is in March um, the application link is here and you have to submit all of the everything uh, including your uh, uh, reference letters and everything by this date and on 1st June you will have the uh, your result so after 1st June when you have your result it is like very very smooth process for Irish visa it's it's there's no hard and fast documents requirement. There's no like, well, drilling or else is still required even for the visa. So if, even if you any somehow get the scholarship, somehow get the uh, admission, you will still have to take an English language exam to apply for the visa. But other than that, uh, there's nothing which which can stop you from applying for the visa and getting the visa. And the, honestly, the visa process works in, in just uh, maximum 10 days uh, if you're applying for the student visa I'm not speaking of other categories so here uh, has again the list of can, uh, universities and other things and other couple of questions which you can read here and even if uh, all this document my video and like my response to your comments doesn't answer you or something you can always email them and ask them so the key here is that I'll be posting this uh, I am posted this video and uh, I'll be coming back to comments of this video to reply to any query. Uh, if some of you know me personally, only if you know me personally, you can reach out to me and I'll be really happy to help uh, because, oh my God, because I just, I just love the, this is scholarship. I mean, this is just a key. This is a way this is a portal so this is a reference uh, scholarship and the atmosphere of this uh, scholarship portal it shows you for example it shows you one two three four so those are four different applications for four different universities and it shows you for example it was submitted on 11th March uh, 11th March and 23rd of February so if you if you go in this scholarship it will further show you you have to submit primary details um, like your contact contact information so on your application eligibility that you belong to a non-eu country and so on and details of the offer so in details of offer you have to submit your uh, uh, your number of uh, application number and your uh, your application number and your document here from document i mean your unconditional or final offer letter and then your academic worker history and personal statement and references you just upload your documents here and then you sign here uh, if you have your documents ready i mean if you have your sop and references late, uh, letters ready trust me this application would take less than half an hour um, i mean even half an hour is a lot if you have your documents ready so i believe if you're applying for scholarships uh, you should have these in hand but get them get the reference letters and your SOP tailor made particular for you particularly for this scholarship and in terms of SOP there is uh, best that you write your own essays and based on that so that's all I'll be looking forward to comments and questions and once again I'm happy to help